Right, we're on. Left wrist at the top of the golf swing. Cupped. Open face. Bowed. Closed face. But is that entirely true? Yes, if you're cupped, your face is going to be open in relation to something. If it's bowed, it's going to be closed in relation to something. But does that mean it's incorrect? That's today's topic. So last week I was coaching and the gentleman I was coaching, he explained to me that when he filmed his swing, at the top of his swing, his left wrist was in a cupped position, so angle between left hand and wrist at the top, so he, he was a cupped position, therefore face was open. So he was working really hard to try and fix that, however he hit the ball from right to left. So the impact factors, a face closed to a path, but from an open position at the top, had him confused. And quite rightly so, if your face is open at the top and you're, you're, you're in this cup position, surely your club face is going to be open to impact, surely? When I play golf, I'm, I'm slightly cupped at the top, so my left wrist is slightly cupped, so therefore my face has appeared to be slightly open. However, at impact, because of my Eureka golf swing, there's cupped at impact. As I come down, because the body moves, I get to there. Then all of a sudden, here, I'm in a flatter left wrist position. If I just lift that straight up, you'll see it's now much squarer and less cupped because I've got the body to work. So what that suggests is that when you film yourself on camera, you may see one thing, but it might not be important with impact or relate to how impact works. So I'm slightly cupped at the top, but then I bring it out on the way down by using my body. I get the ball to move slightly right to left, like that one, that's on it. It was all right. <laughs> so I asked the player in question to do the following drill. I asked him to simply take his grip on the golf club. Now his grip was strong, his left hand was turned right round to the right hand side, very strong. He could see almost four knuckles on his left hand. And then he took his grip, so he was there. Then I simply asked him, can you cock the golf club upwards in front of your body? So he cocked it up and now his left wrist is cupped. So from that position I said lift your arm up and we can see there how that wrist is cupped. So strong position left hand, cock the club upwards and then lift the arm up. You can see how that wrist there is now in a cupped position. You can see the angle between forearm and club shaft and of course there's the face sitting wide open. Now that's come from the grip on the golf club. How this player has adopted his grip or put his hand on the golf club has perceived him to be in that position at the top. I say perceived, he's definitely in that position at the top. Yeah, the club face is open and the wrist is cupped, but that is purely because of the way he's put his hands on the golf club. So then when he's doing his video analysis, so he's got his girlfriend filming his swing, as you do, he looked at that and thought, okay, my club face is open, my left wrist is cupped, yeah, I still hit the ball left, so something obviously funky is happening. But he just looked at that image and thought, that's the problem, I need to fix that. Don't fix that. The impact situation from the strong grip he had to release to get the club face or the hands wanted to go back to a natural position. So that's what was closing the face. But the visual picture of him at the top is what he immediately worked on. And that I totally understand. I understand that, you know, there's people look at their, their swing on camera and they lift the left foot off the ground, so that must be a problem. But they're 65 to 70 years old, need to get as much rotation as they can, they're carrying a little bit of weight, so that is actually a good thing. But vanity kicks in, and we look at it on the camera and think, oh, that left foot has to stay down, or that needs to be much flatter. Well, not necessarily for the individual. Homer Kelly said there's 14 quadrillion, quadrillion, different motions within the golf swing, and they're all correct. Now, they're all correct for the individual. They're not necessarily correct for you and I. Jim Furyk's takeaway, Jim Furyk's backswing, it's not correct for you and I, but the way he delivers into impact, that's correct for him. So this video today is all about being very, very careful in going to the correct professional <laughs> to understand what's right and what's wrong for your golf swing. So that chap I was coaching, his cupped wrist was absolutely fine for what he was trying to do. I'm hitting target all morning this morning. Wow, three greens in a row. But for that individual, it was absolutely fine. The, the individual who lifts the heel off the ground because of the, the, the parameters of the body that I just discussed, that's absolutely fine. But a good professional should be able to tell you that. Should be able to look at your swing and go, okay, that's helping you, do not change that. Although vanity kicks in and we look at it on camera and we compare it to Brooks Kepka and Tiger Woods and Rory McIlroy and we think that's where I need to be. These guys do it every day, they're athletes. We can't get to those positions, I'm sorry. Not everyone can get there. 
I can't get there. Ben Hogan, let's go the other way. Strong, neutral, weaker. Okay, you can see one, one knuckle down there, right hand on. Now that for me would leave the face open. However, Hogan, from there, he was able to release it very hard, as hard as he possibly could with the right hand. And of course, what position was he in at the top? So he started weaker grip there, cock the club up, lift the hand up, now it's nice and flat. Nice flat left wrist there, straight line up the left wrist, down the back of the arm, bingo. There's a picture that we've looked at and perceived that that must be correct. And I'm not arguing with Hogan, absolutely not. That man is correct. Let's just leave that there. So at the top of his swing, he's here, and there's a straight line down there. And then of course from there, because he's hitting hard with the right hand, he is starting to get the left wrist to do its thing. And he can release that really, really hard. So he can release that really, really hard. Now, from the strong grip that the gentleman had that came for a lesson with me, he's read that Hogan can release, release it really, really hard. So now he goes left. So he's got a strong grip, he's cupped, comes down and releases really, really hard and misses target to the left because he's looked at that and went, I need to get into these Hogan positions but I'm not taking into consideration the incorrect position that was correct for the player that was there in the first place. I'm not even sure if I'm qualified to say this but when self-teaching yourself by using video analysis on your camera, on your iPhone, you have to be very, very careful to understand the DNA of your own golf swing first. Read the Hogan books, read the Nicholas books, follow Tiger, watch Kepka, absolutely. But understand how does that relate to your golf swing? Can you get into those positions or are they in positions that they're in or alignments they're in deliberately because of how their body is constructed and how they swing the golf club? And does that differ to the way you set yourself up to the limitations or the physical ability you've got? I take my address position. I know I'm cupped at the top very slightly, but I know I open my, my hips to my feet line, so the action of that happening brings the left wrist into a, a squarer, flatter position, even slightly bowed into impact. I'm aware of that. I know there's an incorrect position at the top. I say an incorrect position, but it's an incorrect position from the images we see online. So I'm cupped, I move body, which squares the wrist up. And there we go, little draw. There we go, there we go. <laughs> so that's been a very different video than what I normally do, but it's an interesting one. I just thought because of the lesson I gave last week and how this chap perceived his, his left wrist position at the top as being incorrect, it was the grip that was incorrect. It was just holding the golf club that was incorrect to begin with. He was firing that back to a neutral position at impact, so he was going left, but he looked at the top and he couldn't understand because at the top he was cupped and face open. So understanding that, so what did we do? Well, we talked about grip. We didn't actually change grip. We left his grip alone and worked on swing technique instead. That was a conscious choice he made. He didn't want to change grip because of how uncomfortable it is, and I get that. So we worked on another part of the swing instead to neutralize that, which was more in keeping with the DNA of his golf swing. But as I say, a very different video today, but I hope it gives you an understanding of looking for, looking for positions, watch the US Open, watch the, the, all the golf on the television, and you'll see the positions these guys get into, all the commentators talk about it, and it's purely relevant to that player. Of course, there's fundamentals to adhere to, but each player's built slightly differently, and we have to accept that. We're not always going to get into those positions, and we work around what we already have. I personally, as a golf coach, look at the fundamentals, adhere to them, but I take the ability a player has or what the player has already, I work with that, make that better and go from there. I don't necessarily say you must be in A, B, C and D positions because it's not always achievable. And I'll see you in my next video.